An Introduction to the Science of Hadith by Ibn Salah al-Shahrazuri, 577-643, the most influential work on the science of hadith in existence. Category 29, Elevated and Low Isnads, Ma'rifat al-Isnad al-Ali wa nazil in the first place, the principle of Isnad is an excellent characteristic of this community and an outstanding example of a confirmed Sunnah. I heard from more than one source that Abdullah ibn Mubarak said the Isnad is part of religion. If it were not for the Isnad, whoever wanted could have said whatever he wanted. Seeking elevation or law in Hadith is also a Sunnah. For that reason, undertaking the journeys were recommended as stated above. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, God be pleased with him, said, Seeking an elevated isnad is a sunnah from those who came before. Indeed, we heard that in his final illness, Yahya bin Ma'in, God be pleased with him, was asked, What do you desire? He replied, An empty house and an elevated isnad. Elevation keeps defectiveness away from the isnad, because it is possible for defectiveness to come, either inadvertently or deliberately, from every transmitter in the isnad. Therefore, a small number of transmitters represent a small number of sources of defectiveness and a large number of men represents a large number of sources of defectiveness. This much is patently clear. The elevation sought in the transmission of hadith has five subcategories. 1. Proximity, qurb, to the messenger of God, peace be upon him, through a clean, unweak isnad. That is one of the most noble types of elevation. We heard that the ascetic and scholar Muhammad bin Aslam at Tusi, God be pleased with him, say, Proximity in the Isnad is proximity, or a means to gain proximity to God. He is right, because proximity in the Isnad is proximity to the Messenger of God, and proximity to him is proximity to God. 2. The second subcategory is the one the expert Abu Abdullah al Hakim mentioned, that is, proximity to one of the authorities of Hadith even if there are a large number of intermediaries between that authority and the messenger of God, peace be upon him. When that is found in an isnad, it is described as elevation in view of its proximity to that authority, even if it is not elevated in relation to the messenger of God, peace be upon him. The remarks of Al-Hakim create the false impression that proximity to, mess to the messenger of God, peace be upon him, is not counted as a desirable form of elevation at all. This is an error regardless of who says it. Because proximity to the Prophet, peace be upon him, with a clean, unweak isnad is more deserving of being called elevation, and no one who possesses a grain of knowledge can dispute that. It would seem that Al Hakim sought by these remarks of his to establish the validity of elevation in an isnad based on its proximity to an authority, even if the isnad is not close to the Messenger of God, and to censure those in this regard who pay attention to the mere proximity of isnad to the Messenger of God even if it is a weak isnad. For that reason, he gave the hadith of Abu Hudba, Dinar, and Al-Ashjaj, and their peers as examples of proximity to the Prophet. God knows best. 3. Elevation in relation to the transmission of one of the books of the Sahih, that is Bukhari and Muslim, or the other famous authoritative books, the agreements, Muwafaqat, substitutions, Abdal, equivalents, Musawa, and handshaking, Musafaha, which have lately become famous, refer to this. Later transmitters of hadith have come to pay a good deal of attention to this type of elevation. Some of those whom I found mentioning this type of elevation in their remarks are the expert Abu Bakr al-Khatib, some of his teachers Abu Nasr ibn Makula, Abu Abdullah al-Humaydi, and others of their generation, as well as those who came after them. Agreement, Muwafaqa. It is when a hadith comes to you from the teacher who transmitted it, to Muslim, for instance, with an elevated isnad, with few intermediaries that the hadith has when you relate it from Muslim from his teacher. Substitution, badal. An example of this would be for that particular hadith, the same elevation described above comes to you from a teacher other than the teacher of Muslim. Sometimes substitution is called agreement, so the example we cited may be said to be an elevated agreement in respect to the teacher of Muslim's teacher. Even if the isnad has not been elevated, it would still have been an instance of agreement and substitution. However, in practice, these terms would not be applied to an unelevated isnad because there is no interest in that kind of hadith. Equivalence, musawa, 
In our day, it is when the number of intermediaries in your isnad is fewer, not to the teacher of Muslim and his peers, nor to the teacher of his teacher, but rather to someone more remote than that, like the companion or someone near him. And this may even be to the messenger of God, peace be upon him, so that the number of intermediaries between you and, for instance, the companion is the same as the number between Muslim and that companion. So you are therefore equal, Musawiyan, to, for instance, Muslim in regard to the proximity of isnad and the number of transmitters in the isnad. Handshaking, Musafaha. This is when the equivalence we describe belongs to your teacher rather than to you. So you have handshaking. Because it is as if you had the hadith met, uh, in that hadith met Muslim and shook hands with him through it, on account of your having met your teacher who is equal to Muslim. If the equivalence belongs to the teacher of your teacher, the handshaking goes to your teacher. So you can say, it is as if my teacher heard Muslim and shook his hand. If the equivalence belongs to the teacher of your teacher's teacher, then your handshaking belongs to your teacher's teacher. When, then you can say in regard to it, it is as if the teacher of my teacher heard Muslim and shook his hand. It is better that you do not mention any connection to yourself for that, but rather say it is as if X heard it from Muslim without saying for it, my teacher or the teacher of my teacher. It will not remain hidden to someone who gives it some thought that in case of equivalence and handshaking accruing to you, your isnad and the isnad of Muslim or someone like him will converge only at a distance from the teacher of Muslim, for example, on the companion or someone close to him if the handshaking which you mentioned does not belong to you, but rather to one of the transmitters above you in isnad. The convergence of the two isnads of the transmitter above you in isnad can happen to a teacher of Muslim or his peers and the handshaking when it is mixed with agreement, the sense of agreement refers to a special form of equivalence and handshaking, since it means that one of the earlier transmitters of your elevated isnad was equal or shook hands with Muslim or Bukhari, because that transmitter heard the hadith from someone who had heard it from the teacher of Bukhari or Muslim in the case of handshaking. Despite the posterity of that transmitter's generation in relation to theirs, for the reason we gave one finds instances of handshaking along with agreements and substitutions in many of the elevated hadiths supplied by those who we first spoke about in the category in their uh, contemporaries. Be aware that this type of elevation is elevation dependent on lowness, nuzul, since if it were not for the lowness of the authority in this isnad, you would not be elevated in your isnad. In mar, uh, marf in English, it's a location. Uh, I had recited to us our prolific teacher, Abu Muzaffar Abdurrahman, the son of the author Abu Sa'ad al-Sam'aini, God bless them, from the collection of the 40 hadith of Abu Barakat al-Furawi, a hadith regarding which Furawi claimed that he was as if he himself or his teacher had heard it from Bukhari. The teacher Abu Muzaffar said, it is not elevated in relation to you, rather it is low in relation to Bukhari. This is a good and clever response which uh, takes this type of elevation down a notch, and God knows best. Number four. One of the types of elevation is the de elevation derived from a transmitter dying early. An illustration of this is a hadith I relate from a teacher who informed me from someone else, from the expert Bayhaqi, from the expert Abu Abdullah al-Hakim. It is more elevated than my relation of that same hadith from a teacher who informed me from someone from Abu Bakr ibn Khalaf, from Hakim, despite both his nads having the same number of intermediaries, because Bayhaqi preceded Khalaf ibn Khalaf. Bayhaqi died in 458-1066 AD, ibn Khalaf in 487-1094 uh, AD. We heard that the expert Abu Ya'la ibn al-Khalil ibn Abdullah al-Khalili, God be pleased with him, said, Sometimes one isnad is more elevated than another because its transmitter died early, even if both are equal in the number of intermediaries. As an example of this, he cited one of his own hadiths similar to the one I mentioned above. This is a discussion of elevation based on priority of death derived from the comparison of one teacher with another and the measuring of one, measuring of one against another. As for the elevation derived solely from your teacher dying early without regard to measuring him against another transmitter, one of the people concerned with this made the threshold 50 years. That is what I heard from Abu Ali al-Hafiz and Nisaburi. He said, I heard Ahmed ibn Umair al-Dimashki, and he was one of the pillars of hadith saying, the isnad of 50 years from the death of the teacher is an isnad possessing elevation. One of the things that we hear from the experts, Abu Abdullah ibn Manda, is that he said, when 30 years elapsed on a had isnad, it is elevated. This threshold is broader than the first, and God knows best. Stay tuned for part five.